Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, it's time for another stream of consciousness drive time rant. Once again, this one comes from the forum and just the other day and somebody posted about, well, actually I keep getting it all the time. Beginners keep asking, oh, what oscilloscope should I get? And uh, is this little uh, DS, especially this, uh, what is it called, the DSO Nano oscilloscope? It's like a little iPod size uh, digital storage oscilloscope with a little screen and everything, and all oh, USB oscilloscopes, etc., etc. Now, um, I've done an entire blog on uh, digital storage oscilloscopes and USB oscilloscopes. So if you want more info on that, I suggest you check that out. But basically I keep getting all these emails about, oh, is this DSO Nano any good? Is this little FPGA uh, oscilloscope kit any good? Should I get it? And, oh, I can't afford a real oscilloscope. Should I get one of these? And, well, my answer has always been that these little oscilloscopes are toys. They are pieces of shit, really. They're, they're fine if you just want to learn about FPGAs or something like that, but if you want an oscilloscope, do not waste your money on them. Now, if you cannot afford uh, something like the Rigol DS1052E uh, oscilloscope, which I still think is the best value for money uh, digital scope on the market, then if you can't afford that, what is it, like 400 US dollars or something, okay, fair enough, you know, that's a lot of money to beginners and hobbyists, fair enough. Well, don't go out and spend 50 or or $100 on one of these DSO Nanos or one of these little FPGA uh, oscilloscope kits or one of these little PIC or Atmel AVR oscilloscope kits because they're just toys and utter garbage, right? And I'll explain why in a minute, but what you should do, okay, this is my advice and this is the best advice you'll ever get, okay, is to go out and get yourself an old second-hand analog oscilloscope, a crow, a cathode ray oscilloscope. You, you know the one with the CRT screen where you can actually see the waveform, you know, like in a, on a uh, real CRT television? An analog crow. Get yourself one of those. A standard 20 megahertz dual channel uh, analog oscilloscope is all you will need as a beginning hobbyist. Digital storage oscilloscopes are great, okay? Um, and, and I recommend if you can afford the $400, go out and buy the Rigol or something similar. But if you can't afford that, um, in fact, I recommend even if you can afford that, still go out and get yourself an analog oscilloscope. 20 megahertz is a nice starting bandwidth. Dual channel, make sure it's a dual channel one, although you can get brand new uh, one single channel 10 megahertz, brand new at like JCAR for like a hundred dollars. And they're, they're, well, they're quite reasonable value for money, but I, I think you should go out and probably get a, um, a second hand one, like a second hand Tektronics, but there's heaps of brands out there, Kikasui, uh, Hitachi, all these old brands, um, you know, there's Agilent, HP, and you know, there's a whole gold star, and oh, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, and they practically give them away on eBay. Oh my God, the market is flooded with these cheap oscilloscopes. And if you can't get a 20 megahertz dual channel oscilloscope, analog oscilloscope for 50 bucks, then seriously, you are not trying at all, okay? People even give these away for free, okay? Here's a tip for you. If you go to, you know, the Psy Electronics Design News Group or one of the other electronics design news groups, even the EEV blog forum, and you ask nicely, look, I'm a beginner, I can't afford, you know, does anyone have an ancient analog oscilloscope that they would like to donate? Then the odds of you actually getting one for free are reasonably high. And I know this because I've given uh, analog scopes away before myself, and I've also directed many people over the years, this is before the forum, 
um, b- before the blog, and I've directed them to these news groups, and they've asked nicely, or they've asked around a university or something like university lab or something like that, and people are just giving these oscilloscopes away. And I highly recommend you pick one up because it will be the best learning experience ever. Now, the other thing on the forum, uh, this forum post I originally uh, spoke about, is that um, somebody on there, I can't remember who it was, mentioned that, oh, analog oscilloscopes are too hard to use and digital ones are so nice and easy. That is the most complete and utter load of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. If digital oscilloscopes work exactly the same as analog oscilloscopes except they store the waveform digitally instead of uh, tracing it out um, continuously on a CRT sweeping across on a CRT display. There is no difference at all. If you use both of them in manual mode you should not see any difference at all. In fact you could argue that digital scopes are harder to use than, than a traditional well laid out analog oscilloscope. So unless you're using this auto set button, you know, all these modern oscilloscopes have got like an auto button. You push it and it sets up the time base for you. It sets up the vertical attenuators for you. It sets up the triggering for you. It sets up everything and it displays the waveform. Usually, um, it's not foolproof, but it displays the waveform perfectly on screen. And if you're a beginner and you buy one of those digital scopes and you just learn to push that auto button and your waveform appears, then you have not learnt anything about using an oscilloscope at all. So I highly recommend that you go out and you get yourself a proper analog oscilloscope. 100 megahertz bandwidth is nice by the way, if you can get dual channel 100 megahertz, do it. Now you can get one of those for under 100 bucks, it's certainly possible. Um, like an old, um, you know, even you know, 50 megahertz is nice, something like that, but if you can afford 100 megahertz dual channel analog, beauty. You will never regret it, trust me. It will be a great purchase and even when you upgrade to a digital scope later, you will most likely want to uh, keep that analog scope for various reasons that I won't go into in terms of screen updating and noise performance and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, yes, get an analog oscilloscope and learn to use oscilloscopes properly because they teach you, analog oscilloscopes teach you how an oscilloscope actually works. Even the modern digital ones, they work the same way um, in terms of time base and triggering and all that sort of thing. They will teach you a lot, so do that. Now the reason that these cheap USB uh, and these little portable DSO nanos and these uh, uh, FPGA development kits are all a load of garbage is because they don't have proper input circuitry on them, okay? They don't have a proper vertic- high bandwidth vertical attenuator and they don't have proper triggering and they're just, they're just toys, really. And I've explained this before and I won't, I shouldn't go into it again, but really don't waste your money. You might think you're getting a bargain on an oscilloscope for 50 bucks. It is complete and utter garbage compared to a dual channel analog scope. And that's the end of that. So, oh, I, yeah, I won't waste any more time on it. Go and buy an analog oscilloscope, please. See you next time. Back in time.